Hey, good morning, it's Tony from AE Construction. You're watching Build with AE, and it's another beautiful Monday morning, start of the week. So, we've got a big week in front of us, got the brickies here at the moment. What we're going to do is get the build now up to damp with the old Imperial Blues. We're just working out the gauge, obviously, we worked it out the vent, so it works well with the damp as well. Just getting loaded all out so we can uh, crack on and start getting the internal block work up. Once we've done that, we'll then use the uh, Salatex cavity fill, which we always use. These are seven Newton thermalite blocks. We'll end up making some profiles in here on this section here and another profile over there so the brickers can then work to it. They'll put their corner blade profiles up on each of the corners set everything all up and then they'll be away. So you'll see this on the time lapse as we're going through, you'll start to see all the block work go up first. You'll then start to see all the relevant profiles then being fitted up and then the brickwork then will crack on. Yesterday we got rained off, which was a bit unfortunate, but now we're back at it on the Friday end of the week. So we've got the weekend, looking forward to that. We've got the brickies in now, running the corner in here at the moment. We've got Jack now cutting the closures and the half of bricks here at the moment. We've got Jim who's running in this corner side. So, morning, Jim. Morning. Morning, Dean. Running this corner, so I love this. Uh, Hello, good Morgan. Good Morgan. <laughs> so we are, we put the Celatex in here. We've got then the gap required for the airflow for the building regulations. Now you can see what we've done on this end gable. We've actually used the old blues, and that's literally how the house is over in that corner over there. You can see. And actually what's happening is we're running the gauge in and then it's like a three quarter cut and a closure. On this, we've got a three quarter and then closure here, three quarter and closure. And then that works out to the gauge, what we then need and then it runs across. Same over here. When we've worked the gauge out across there, you can actually see now that's running then to a three quarter closure. So the, the guys will get the brickwork up and around there, which would be cool. We've been also busy this week. We've been doing the block and beam as well. So it was really, really key. We got this in uh, this week and got it put into the relevant pockets there. We've got another air vent that we've got in onto that section there to ventilate underneath here as well. So basically what we're now doing is we're ripping down the ceiling, which is here. We're getting that all exposed. We're gonna do the demolition of this wall that you'll see in the time lapse. And if I just go through to here, you'll actually see we've ripped out now the downstairs toilet shower room in here, disconnected the shower here, the electrics on that point, took out the vanity basin, the toilet, all of this gets ripped out. What will happen is we'll take this ceiling out here, get all this exposed, so we get rid of this stud wall, and then we can then start to work on this floor space here. We've got a busy day in front of us, getting the site ready. Now, one of the things that we do for drainage when we're trying to get water off a bill, we use this brilliant product, it's called Elephant Trunking. Can't recommend it enough. Go online, just Google elephant trunking and you can get it in rolls like this. You buy it in about 50 or 100 meter rolls. The elephant trunking, your downpipe goes in there. You then cut it to the length that you want. But this is a great product. It saves you then trying to run pipes all over the place and just then get them knocked. But elephant trunking is a big must. So uh, it's a definite uh, recommendation that is. We're cracking on really well with the brickwork here now. One of the things I do look for is to make sure all the perts are lining through. And as you can see, I think you'll agree, the lads have done a great job here, smashed it really. I'm really, really pleased with the way this is. We've left a couple of bricks out just so we can clean the cavities out, make sure the actual way it's going to be drip groove. Obviously, we've got the weep holes which are going to go in place here, which are these weep holes here. These are the weep holes that we use actually. We don't use the bigger ones, we just like these ones here. They're just a, a smaller weep hole, just look a little bit neater. So I'll put that back in there. We're tying up all the way through here, putting all this up, bonding up all the way through here. This is the first story section of the building.
lovely you guys actually uh, on the comments below asked how we do steels. If you're new to the channel, you can go and see one of the videos, how we use one of these machines, how to set them up. We think they're really, really cool because they lift about 600 kilos per actual lift. And then also they're a lot more flexible. You can, they move around a lot easier than uh, genies we personally feel. So we love using these, these are really, really cool. These blocks are called wide tongue blocks. Um, and what we've done is then put the pad stones in place. These are a seven Newton high strength block, okay? So they're a really strong block. And then we've got a uh, full size block pad stone there. We've then got a double pad stone on this side here. And then also we've got a pad stone here. So basically where the two steels interconnect. What we've got here, we've got one 152, 152 by 37. We've got one then next to it. This beam is, because it's 152, 152, the beam next to it, 152, 152, well then comes to 304. The cavity is 300 mil, so that's why these will go together. We have connection points. Now these connection points are called cap plate details, okay? We've had these additional holes put in just in case we need them, but you'll see the whole process of this steel going in first because the reason this has got to go in first before these other two which are here is because we've got a couple of captive nuts on here because obviously when these two steels go together, we're not going to be able to get to those nuts. So Jody, top guy he is, he's now welded these onto here for us so we can actually get a decent bolt through there and obviously when we can bolt all this and then do a final weld on the joint. But they'll actually actually go into this position, this position, and here, and here as well. Obviously we've got this steel lifted up halfway on the beam, which is then great. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna lift this beam up first. Once that's lifted in and in position in place, we're then gonna pull this lift. Then around here, we're then gonna lift this one first and this one second. So we'll just lift this steel and put it to the back. And then that will then go in across here, which you'll see. So guys, as you can see, we've now got the first couple of steels on up here. Basically, they're gonna take the 300 mil cavity wall. We've got this other steel here. As we said, this was the first steel that we got in. We've then bolted then these two steels to the steel. We've got the fourth steel that we're now just winding up, getting it ready to go into place. got the plank set up over here now ready then to start cutting these joists these are going to be the flat roof joists as well as the floor joists we're going to cut these floor joists down to 7b3s because obviously the specification for this flat roof is actually 8b3 which we're going to put in but obviously we know that the floor joists here are actually 7b2s next door what we'll do we'll, we'll cut through those joists to the right size so when we match them through with the ceiling and the floor from the existing it'll be absolutely beautiful and perfect Perfect. Pete's doing an amazing job here getting all of these flat roof joists in here. Now, because of this type of block, you've got to make sure you adhere to the manufacturer's specification. So what they have to do, what they specify is that they like the joist to sit on a four mil rubber roofing felt or a four mil neoprene, okay? So what we've done, we've gone down the route of roofing felt because it's just a lot easier to get a hold of. So as you can see here, what we've done, We've cut them three inches wide by four inches long, and we're doing a whole series of them like this. And what that does, that's what's recommended by the manufacturer who supplies the actual white tongue blocks, okay? Now that's pretty much set for most light, lightweight blocks, thermalite blocks like this. So obviously thermalite might have a similar sort of specification. It's not like a normal standard block where you can actually just rest the joist straight on it. We've got them all running along here. This is gonna be the opening for the actual lantern that's gonna go in here. Obviously we'll get the, uh, the correct measurements of the internal wall of the actual upstand. So when the lantern sits on, we get it all lovely. So the plaster wall runs through beautifully. But you can see over here, how neat these joints that Pete's been doing here. I'm really, really pleased. He's uh, coming on absolutely beautiful. And you can actually see the neatness of that joint there. It's really, really nice to have.
Well, basically, today's project's been just getting all these beams in, ready to take the floor above, space them out your 400 centres, they're all bob on, they're nice and flush with the bottom of the steel, ready to take the plasterboard. Everything's all been marked up, everything's fitting flush, everything's bang on level. There's a couple of joists here that are quite tightly bound together, that's because we're waiting for the uh, steel to come out and this last block to be put back in. Then we can move everything over to a 400 centre. It's Friday, we're having a good clean up, ready for Monday, fresh start. Happy Friday, everyone. Woo!